Yes, I, I believe uh, Coach Nee is ready as well. All right, we're on with Terrence Badge up uptown with forty three, number forty three, and I have to say, Coach Nee, welcome. Hey, Terrence, got a little scared. I called and no one answered. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're very nervous to... that I had the wrong number. No, Coach, you, you know, you know what? And I really appreciate you calling. I was just talking about you and about the conversation. We had yesterday, we talked for like 30 minutes, and it was just crazy. And I told him how much I didn't realize how much I missed talking to you. And I said, you know, you were just one of those coaches that you just – you can sit down and have a beer, and, and next thing you know, it's like three hours later. You know, and yeah. he was just – he was just that that kind of that kind of coach. I mean, I've talked to – I've had Bernard Day on here. I've had Bruce. I've had uh, Carl Hayes. I've had to, uh, Tony Farmer. I've had – you know, I've had some. some they're my boys. They're my yes, boys. Oh, and they love you, and they love you just like I do. I mean, we have so much respect, and it's it is so crazy Thank the you. energy and what you have done for us, and you know, and, and what you instilled in us of hard work and cohesiveness, and what it means to be a Husker was just it was just awesome. And then I was started, you know, reflecting back when I talked to um, Bo, Bo Reed and them, and they was telling me about the run they had. And I didn't realize the run it was it was so significant. Um, back then, I think, I think you guys was was ranked thirteenth uh, or fourteenth. You had they won like thirteen or fourteen in a row. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And when the things are happening like that, Terrence, you, you you just get up every day. You just go from one game to the next game. And I didn't realize the record was going on, or so I just tried to stay focused on being the Husker coach and. Go Huskers and get you guys to play, man. Get the whip out and get the candy bar out. <laughs> whatever, whatever works. You know, like uh, the thing I think of. Carl Hayes came to me one time. We're we're over at Iowa State. Big game near the end of the year. Tim Floyd's last home game, and the trainer comes in to me and he goes, "Hey, Carl Hayes won't eat breakfast." And I said. <laughs> What do you care what he eats? All I care about is that he plays well today. If he wants to go over to Burger King, let him go over to Burger King. I don't care. <laughs> but I'll tell you this. I just want him back here and ready to play. So Carl says, I can go? I said, hell yeah, you can go. Go. And he's, you know, he's telling me how the food that we ate, uh, Terry, you know how good the food was. Oh, my God. Well, it made me go to the bathroom, Coach. And I'm not used <laughs> to eating that kind of food. I, I, I got to get Burger King. He goes over to get Burger King. I think he got 20 points or 18 points. And Lou went with him, and he went off, too. So <laughs> I'm saying to myself, I don't know what we're doing with this training table. We should be eating at Burger King every night. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy. But and Carl said, told me the story about uh, a year ago. I didn't talk to Carl Hayes like you. You know, it was about 25 years. Man. Since the last time we talked. Yeah. And, and you know, and coaches. That's crazy. Coach, That's I had to. Crazy. Yeah, it is. 25 years. But you know the thing about it, too, coach, and, and I was just thinking about that today. And I talked to my mom, and my mom told you how I told you how I tell you hi. And then I, I was thinking about, Thanks. like, I said, mom, I was like, it'll be, he has so much of a following. And I don't even think he knows how much so many players respect him and, and care about him. I said, man, it'll be one of those things that I don't know if he'll ever come in town for like a weekend or something, and all his players come and meet him. Because I tell you, man, that'll be, <laughs> that'll be, be a hell of a party. It'll be a hell of a party. And, 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 and you know, Tony Farmer even said that too. He said, if you can bring everybody together, Terrence, he said, man, I'm telling you, I will come. And then Carl said the same thing. So many people, even Jamar and everyone said that they would love to participate in that. So it's just what you've instilled. You know, it was funny when you talk about the Big Mac, the uh, Burger King. Remember Vince Hamilton? You, Coach, yeah. I had to tell you too i was mad at you because you used to always put me with vincent hamilton or mikey moore because they could never be nowhere on time you always rule me with <laughs> vincent hamilton well i mean <laughs> I, I, honestly there i think that's kind of smart yeah it, it was it was <laughs> but tell the older guy you know, hey just get him there man <laughs> I, I in the back door just get him there i don't want to go out looking for him and, and, it, and it's so crazy to just think about it because vincent Always wanted to go to big um, to Burger King because and he wanted he go to Burger King and ask for Big Mac sauce. I couldn't understand it. I'm like, dude, you're at Burger King, but you asked for Big Mac sauce at, at <laughs> Burger King. But that's he was the same way. That's that's yeah. Vincent I, I'll tell you this: he was Big Eight Player of the Year. Yeah, man, Big Eight Player of the Year. Now, 
And you think about that, you know what I mean? Even by, uh, yeah, it's just a crazy honor. You know, he's a first round draft choice, but he doesn't get any respect. Right. Right. They don't know how great a player he was, man. I mean, it was stupid. I mean, it was stupid. You know, and, and the people, you know, um, you know, you see players today, man, they couldn't wear Vincent Hamilton's jock. I mean, right. He was really a talented, talented big man. Man. I mean, he ran the floor. He could shoot it a little bit. But I'll tell you, he was different now. I mean, he was different. Yeah. He, you know, there were times when, when he didn't want to play, or he had an upset stomach, and mm-hmm. you know, and all these, all these other things. Or, you know, he, he'd say to me some some really dumb crap. And I say, Vince, 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 Vince. The only thing that matters is that we go out there and win, and you got to play, man. Correct. So, suck it up, put the tape on, get your uniform on. Let's go, man. Let's go. And then if you drop that out there, I promise you, I'll get you home. <laughs> he need a body bag. <laughs> yes, he, he he always complained about his stomach. But I was like, man, what the stuff you eat? What the stuff you eat all the time? But it's so crazy. You think well, about no, that? He, no, he he was like a garbage yes. incinerator because he ate all the sweets, all the junk foods. You, you, you know what I mean? A good steak, a good piece of fish. You know, a, a baked potato or a salad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. His stomachs are hurting. <laughs> he, he, he wouldn't need a salad if his life depended on it. So eating some fruit would be a big deal. For, but I'll tell you this, man, the kid was a player. Man. Oh, yeah, he was just a great player. And I didn't realize, you know, um, Jimmy Williams recruited him. You know, I knew he was good and stuff like that. But, you know, he came in. And he just started going in the weight room and getting bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, by the time he was a junior there, holy crap, man. He, he was really a big, mobile, quality, you know, a, a pro-type player. Yes, he, he was. really, really, really good. You know, Jimmy did it excellent. Like, remember, remember when um, – when Mikey came, I remember we sat at the table with dinner when Mikey came, and this, this skinny kid with these size eighteen shoes to sit there like, yeah. and he didn't, he didn't have a tool, but he was just, but he he would work, he would work. But he, but the thing about Mikey Moore, he was Terrence. I swear, his basketball IQ was off the Richter scale. He was smart as hell. Yes. In basketball, now he was artistic, and he had his tattoos, and you know all his other art, reptiles. Art, you, know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I kept saying to him, "You're not going to make any money with these drawings." But I'll tell you, if you get in the weight room and get some muscle, you can play some pro basketball for a few years. Because no one is you're that tall, that agile. But you know, he never got big. Right? You know? He never he, did. He, no, he never got big. I, I went somewhere to see him play, and I'm looking at him. I'm going. And he almost looks like he did when he was with me. I mean, he, yes. he never got muscular and stuff. And the coaches were telling me, you know, you know, he he got this tall body, but he's not a center. You know, he, he's he's not and he's not a guard, but he's a wing player. He, you know what I mean? But man, he was good too. He, and and he played. I think he played in the league for around ten years. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he had a great run with Byron Scott with New, with the Nets with Jason Kidd. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had that great run right. against and against the like, Lakers and you stuff. Know, you think about our guys. Piatkowski had a, a long run. Oh yeah, Lou had a long run. Yes. Mikey had a long. Strickland. All, a, a mm-hmm. bunch of these guys played for a long time, or they went overseas and it was just good overseas. Playing Bruce Trouble played for ten or twelve years overseas. And yes, he did. He did. They were making good money over there too. Yes, yes, yes. I was, <laughs> do you remember when you went to um, France? I was a freshman. I went to oh man, that and you would, have, <laughs> Bruce. Bruce challenged you to a drinking contest, and then in the morning, Bruce <laughs> got on the bus in the back. I don't know if we should be telling this <laughs> on the radio. Man. Some border reason in arms over this. Yeah, but, you know, we, we, we treated you like men and. The French served folks, so you understand. We ate these gourmet meals after the game. We ate yes. the other team. That was part of it. But, you know, the French and stuff, and the Italian, the Spanish group, they, they all served wine. Yes. With the meal. You know, you couldn't get a Coca Cola. So, so all of them are looking down at me. And I said, man, you drink, you're growing ass, man. You drink what you want to drink. Right. But so one of you guys throw up, I'm going to fuck up, kill you. You know, I played so, in, uh, I played in. Started? Yeah, yeah. I played in Ireland, Belfast, and I played oh, there. Gosh. And so, for breakfast, you had a pint of beer. Oh, yeah. and, then, oh and then at lunch, you had a pint, and then at dinner, you had a pint. Man, I was, I, I was like, I, I told my coach, I said, "Look, we got to eat dinner after practice because I, I'm not gonna make it through." You know, because you know, his wife 
would cook dinner for us and cook lunch for us and everything too. I was like, man, a, a beer, a beer, a, a meal. Is, hey. <laughs> when we went to Australia, remember the Australian guys? Yes. They were men. They were really good. They were men. I mean, men, men. Yes. Like they were an NBA team. And, and they all sat down and started drinking. <laughs> I started to laugh. You know, like Jimmy doesn't drink. He's a <laughs> the guy coached us. He'd have a beer. I said, hell yeah, but I have a beer. Yes. I have more than one, too. I'll tell you that right now. You had to beat us that fast. He said, like, come on. Oh, man. Me? It, was, it was just super. The trips, the trips were out of sight. How about Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico was awesome. Puerto exactly. Rico was awesome. And, and we beat Illinois? Yes. Remember? Yep, and Carl Hayes went off for about 35. Mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. the, the Illinois guys come up to me and go, what's this deal? Is Carl Hayes that good? I said, no, he hates you guys because you didn't recruit him. Yes. He didn't <laughs> recruit him. And he told me he was going to play the best <laughs> game of the year. And, and that's what he did. And the, they're looking at me. Lou Hens is looking at me like, are you kidding me? He, they didn't even know who he was. I, I don't even think they knew he went to St. Joe's. I, I don't know. They just didn't know who he was, boy. But they know now. I mean. It was. I I think of things like that. It's just crazy. Yeah. Question two. I always wanted to ask you, how did you find Jamar? Because Jamar was like oh, no, neck and neck with Damian with that, Damian that, Bailey. No, no. Jamar was easy because he came from Concord, and it's a it's a suburb of Elkhart, Indiana. And I coached in Notre Dame in South Bend in Milwaukee. But my my assistant at Ohio University is a guy named Billy Hahn. Mm-hmm. And his brother, his younger brother, coached at Concord. And so he came down to, I, I just knew him personally, but I did not know, you, you know who he, you know who else played there, was the great player, the great big kid. I'm, I just went Sean blank Kemp. on his name. Was well, Sean Kemp? You know, yeah, 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 it was Sean. And, and Sean's there, but the guard, you know, he, he was Mr. Indiana, you know. Yeah, Damian Bailey, he, yep. Jamar was real, really good. He got recruited by everyone. And, you know, we just stayed on him hard and, and talked to him all the time. And a lot of guys were going in there after their, you know, Sean. And then all of a sudden, just at the end, I think we were the best school recruiting them and showed the most interest. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, you know, with help from his brother, you know, knowing me and everything, we just, and, and you know who did a really good job on him? Mitchum. Yes, Lynn did. Yeah, Lynn did a great job because mm-hmm. Lynn was in there babysitting them all the time, and he <laughs> liked Lynn. And Lynn was from Lynn was from South Bend, okay. so there were a lot of little fits there, and we just got along. But um, Jimmy Hahn was the head coach, and, and they, they were really good. Yeah. But Jamar was, I mean, he, he was one of the higher profile players we ever got. He because he was like I think Mister Indiana. Yes, he was. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and I mean that's really, really now those guys usually went to Indiana, you know, Michigan, mm-hmm. Kentucky, you know, some places like that. They they didn't come out to Helmet Country, you know, right? They just didn't they didn't do it. But once they got there, they liked it. They liked it. Man. They yeah, liked it. they loved the Devaney Center. They loved the fan support. Mm-hmm. And then you know the Big Eight, and then you know now the Big Twelve. I mean, it was a pretty cool conference to play in. It was. It was. I remember when we was. Um, the KU rival was always huge, you know. Oh, every, it didn't man, Billy it Tubbs. Better than a KU game, man. <laughs> yeah, because at home we could we had a hell of a time beating them in Lawrence. Boy, yes. but we we got some good licks in them. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> we had some good. We got lucky, but uh, still, that's part of the game, man. We were so they would they would roll in there with this super duper record and stuff, mm-hmm. and champ, and all that. And with all these studs, right on their butt. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a, that was a that was a pleasure, and letting them walk out of here with an L. So, I mean, we yeah. still down there to the Oklahoma and Tubbs. I mean, he oh, was oh man, finally he was Spitfire. Oh, but it took a long time to get him, but we finally got him. Terrence, you you weren't even at Nebraska, but they have Mookie Blaylock and Ricky Grace, or their starting guards, <laughs> and I got Brian Carr. And, and someone else, a, a nice player, but I mean, I got boys, <laughs> and they had these animals up front. And King, they, they just were really, really, really good. And it's 1988, and and they are presents, and they're presents. And he's up by 40, you know, maybe 50. It was some we couldn't get the ball up the half court sometimes. Man. And Mookie Blaylock, and I, I don't know Mookie Blaylock, Ricky Grace, you know, at the time, you know, mm-hmm. I'm just saying, man. These guys are too good to be here. I mean, they're really good. You know, they're really good players. But then 
when they went on to the NBA and they went to the Final Four that year, Kansas and Oklahoma both went to the Final Four. You know, you need to say, holy crap, man, we got a long way to go. You know, a long way to go to, to get to play with these guys. And mm -hmm. so I remember I said to the assistants, I said, look, man, I, I, we're bringing in nice players and all that, but if we can't, if the guys that you're bringing up here, the Nebraska to visit, if they can't, if they're not being recruited by Oklahoma or Kansas or can't play on their teams, how the hell do you think we can bring them up here and then beat those guys? Yeah. And everyone, you know, looked around, Borg and everyone, you know, everyone, you know, Lynn, and I said, you know, I said, I'm, I'm not John Wooden, man. I said, we got to get some better <laughs> players. So I said, oh, they can come here and we get them in the weight room. And then I said, well, every kid that comes in, that's a, I'm, I'm red shirt. I'm not telling them anything. We're red shirt. Yeah, you know I mean they'll, they'll figure it out later. You know what I mean they'll thank me when they're seniors or fifty seniors. I agree. Starting and they've gained twenty five pounds. You know yeah. that's what happened with you, right? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was the best yeah, thing. But... Know, and, and, and if I talked to you when you came in and I said, "Oh, we're gonna red shirt you, tell man, you'd be cursing at me, swearing at me, calling <laughs> up your mother, crying, saying I'm transferring." <laughs> Nebraska, Omaha. But I had no fundamentals, great. though. I had no fundamentals. Remember, our coach just let us go. So he didn't, he, we was just that talented of a group where we was just run a gun. And then when it got to college, you had to learn something. You know what I'm saying? It was pivot, oh, it was moving. Yeah, it had to grow up. And, <laughs> and now it's time and, to become a man. Yeah, I, I hear you. But that's, but that's, 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 that's 85% of the people that come from high school to college. They're not ready, man. They're not ready. Right, you, you know what I mean, and, and the red shirt year in the, in the weight room, and you, you're going from being the big dog to the puppy, mm -hmm. you know? and, and you come in, and these guys are all older than you, bigger than you, stronger than you, and they're going to kick your butt, and, and that's all there is to it. So, yeah. But the red shirt, and I, I copied that off Coach Osborne. You know really? He, you know, they said, "Well, how about your first?" He says, "No, Danny, they, we we get them ready. They're not ready to play." And, you know, yeah. I started, we started doing the same thing. And all of a sudden, man, you know, after the, that, that fifth year, I think it was the fifth year. Um, I can't remember the year, but we just blew up and, yeah. and, and started playing really well. And then one, it was Martin Massengale. He was, uh, is it the chancellor or the president, whatever he was. Somehow I have a talk with him and he goes, you know, Danny, we, we expect, you know, the win this year. And I said, Doctor Messing, I expect to win every year. But, I know, heard that. I heard that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I don't know what's going to happen. Right. He goes, well, this is the year we, we judge you. You, you got to win this year. We we got to win. The Huskers got to win. You know, like like saying to me, you're going to get fired if you don't win. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we blew up, and we really, really, I, you know, had a good team, but we were older, you know. And Rich King and you, you guys, I mean, you know, yeah. Rich King didn't get any respect until he was a senior. Right. Right, you know, and mm -hmm. he, he's he, he had about five, six, five years as in the NBA first round draft choice. You know, people forget how good he was. He was really good. Oh, Rich was, was good. Tom, you know, we got Tony Farmer. It was good. All, all those oh, guys. Oh, Tony was good. Farmer was ridiculous. You, you had Tony that. Farmer had a chance if he could have kept his nose clean. If he could have just came back for the next year. You yeah, know, but it was Looney Tunes back then. You know, and he, the thing, things happened. And yeah. he ended up playing the draft, you know. But he another year with us would have really refined him and, and, and grounded him, and he he, he probably had a longer career in the NBA. But mm -hmm. no, he he I think for a big guy, he might have been the most talented player. Do you do you ever think about the athletes you you've had and and, and the, I mean you yeah you've, I, I mean I you it all the time. remember our freshman year high school kids now yeah you know what I mean and I went to other jobs you know when I coached the Duquesne you know I mean. Yeah, <laughs> you've had some, and coach. You've done an excellent job of recruiting. I mean, you know, you said you was. Where'd you go after Nebraska? Where'd you end up going after Nebraska? Okay, I went to Mar. I was mad at. I was mad at Nebraska. I was mad at Bill Burns. I was mad at how the, the press. So I just wanted to get out of town, and I went to Robert Morris. Okay. In Pittsburgh, and then I was just mad. And after one year there, I'm going. What the hell am I doing? So. uh Duquesne opened up and it was a better job, not better player, but just a better job, more pay, better conference, you know, mm -hmm. all that stuff. So I moved down there and then five years later I got fired. Okay. And then it's just like a debacle, you know, you get mad and you get frustrated, but you know, then I've been fired two times in a row and I'm going, I'm starting to lose my confidence. I'm burning myself out, you know, trying to right, right. rebuild the teams. But at Nebraska, 
The greatest thing about it was that when Coach Devaney was there, you knew Al Papik, uh, Epperly, and the weight program. All the things when I walked in, the training, it was there. And it just, it just was there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then we just had to shape it. You know, you know what I mean? And right. fine tune it for the basketball team, you know? And, you know. Like I had to have a long talk with Boyd. I said, Boyd, I don't need my guys to come in and bench press 350 pounds. Mm -hmm. I need them to jump quicker. I, I need lower body strength. This and then once I started telling him what we wanted, he, he was great. The training table was great. How's, how good is Dennis LeBron in the academics? Yeah, yeah, Dennis and, and, and you know Paul Coke was was our trainer. Yeah. Yeah, Paul was yeah, excellent. Paul Coke, he, he yeah, was and then then we had um, Jack Starks, Jack, and then Jack Starks, and then we had um, yeah. who else was the um, af, um, as far as in the training table? Oh, no, not training room. Um, Jack uh, was it Jack? Yeah, yeah, Jack. Yeah, I, uh, I can't think of his name. Not yeah, Nikolai, Jack was, was it? But that's just what I mean. There were no, and then you know the tutors. We we, yeah. we had everything there. We had the outline of what we needed to have a you know a great program, and and then they just gave us time. And then that fifth year, fourth year, whatever it was, yeah. we popped it, and then we started rolling, man. Yes, we did. And, then, you know, and they kept coming in, but the guys came in and they could see their place, and they knew they paid their price. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't move up in the line. We didn't, you know, we just had a nice system going. It was a, a good system. And then you know what killed us was when. Um, Oh, what's his name? Javon. People are telling me, oh, he's going to go hard. I said, no, he's I said, you don't need a junior, man. You don't need way he's going to go early. Right, We've right. never had a guy go early. Yeah, go early. they were telling him he was lying and, all of a sudden, and all that stuff. Yeah. Jerry West calls me. <laughs> I'm saying, who? And it's really funny. Jerry West calls me and tells me, we're going to draft him. And I said, coach, I said, Jerry West, I mean, is he that good? <laughs> and they go, Danny, he's really good. Really good. And that was it, you know. The, that's how it goes, you know. Yeah. And then we didn't have a replacement for him. Then Cookie broke his wrist or whatever he did. And then you know those guys leave. You know now now we have a losing season, and uh, I'm a big dummy all of a sudden. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that's how it goes. Yeah. But if they let us, we were reloading. Jimmy had a couple of really good guys lined up. We reloaded. We were reloaded. We took some junior college players. You know, and um, we we would have been. Right back on track. We would have never gone through the down cycle that they're in now. Never, never would have happened. I think but that's how it goes. I think that you, by far, recruited the most Nebraska players. I, and I mean, I mean, well, you you've see, had that was part of. I knew, I knew the fans wanted Nebraska, like the football team. They, you want the rest. so. I focused. I said we have to control. Well, we had all these kids, good players from Omaha going to Kansas. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and places. And we just went and found the good players. You know, and King turned up to be Andy Markowski. You know, they were just really good players in the state. Yeah, Chad they weren't great players, but they yeah. were good players. Yes, they were Big A players. Yeah, well. and we took them, and then we added a you know Chicago, and New York, New Jersey, a JUCO, a transfer, with California, you know, whatever it took, and we had nice balance. Yeah, and then you know the thing, Terrence. You guys all graduated, man. Amen. People don't understand that. Yeah, they all graduated. Yeah, yeah. I and I was blessed enough. Even I, I have a master's, so I mean, it was even more exciting. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, education. You know, that was one of the things that uh, really made well, me choose see, Nebraska. I learned that when I went to Notre Dame as a young graduate assistant and stayed there four years, and I learned the, the academics and the student athlete and the priority. So when I came in, I knew what we wanted to do. I mean, and I just looked over at football and talked to Coach Osborne a little bit, talked to Al Pavic. You, you know what I mean? Dr. Starks got on board, man. He had to be an idiot. We, we had the blueprint. We were ready to go. Yeah. You know, we just yeah, kept we upgrading did. the talent, upgrading the talent, and then finally we, we caught the break and sort of went. What what um <laughs> Strickland texted me and said uh do you remember Strickland coming into practice late and then he had an MVP practice and then you gave him the forty pound weight vest he had to run the whole stadium <laughs> he, I don't remember he, but I, I, I he know came in the locker room crying tough <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but we we you know it was just you know the the co the the atmosphere of the family thing we we would sometimes we would spend you know. Like before the season start, we'll spend the whole day at the Manny on all Saturday and Sunday. You know, so yeah. get Subway or get good sense. Do you know, know Piakowski senior year had a key? Are you serious? I'm serious. He bribed one of the janitors and stuff, and, <laughs> and he's in there. So then, 
He goes, should I give it to him? I said, hell yeah. And I said, don't tell it. He goes, hell yeah. Right. Oh, man. You know, yeah. I still and remember that I run. Said, Just make sure there won't even Nebraska players in there. That's all. Yeah. And he used to go in there and shoot and stuff and bring his roommate and other people in. Crazy. One of the people texted me and said, you played with Kareem. People don't know that. Yes. That, that was unbelievable. Yeah, I did. Yeah. He, he took an average white guy and got me a scholarship to college. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That is awesome. That is Al awesome. Al McGuire came in and recruited me from power. And I, I went to Marquette for a year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't, you just, you know, just he, he raised everyone's level. Yeah. Not a good player, a great player. A right. Great player. Right. Hey, listen, Terrence, I got to cut you off. No, you're my good. My wife's here. Okay. She just put my dinner in front of me and she's yelling at me saying uh, I got to get off the phone. Tell her I said hello and tell her I appreciate it. I know. So I much. told you about your little girl. I told her. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Say hi. All right. Hey, listen, it was great. Thank you, you so much for calling in, Coach. Okay? I appreciate you. Thank you. I love you, man. Well, I love you too.